turns head. All right. So let's see if we can find some different tidbits about Powell. So go ahead and uh, look, since this one's not too strenuous, follow along as I read CK2. Stand in a neutral position with the feet parallel and wider apart than the shoulder width. Let the body sink down by bending the knees and tucking in the pelvis. Turn the toes in slightly and spread the knees apart, focusing most of the body weight on the heels and outer edges of the feet. I'm going to take a break, break and a breath and let you guys kind of feel that. I'm going to make this step back because I'm trying to get this a little bit forward. So, there you go. Oh. Good. There you go. Um, the weight should be distributed equally on each leg throughout this exercise. Place both hands on the hips while the arms are kept rounded. So it's not like a jaunty, I got my hands here, I'm still thinking connected. You know, I turn my wrist out, so I'm thinking about my pinky being forward, actually, so it's a little hard to see with my sash, but, you know, I'm not just like, mm, I'm, I'm really trying to connect through my shoulder and extend through my fingers. Um, hands on the hips while the arms are kept rounded. Suspend the head, and breathing should be relaxed, continuous, and deep during this exercise. But if you can keep this connected awareness through your arms as you rotate the head, you're, you're you know, that, that's... That's an added thing. It's not just like I'm here and I turn my head. It's, it's a whole body connectivity. Begin to slowly rotate the head to the right. Continue the rotation while keeping the torso and the hips facing forward. The head should be kept in the same horizontal plane throughout the rotation, which keeps the neck vertical. At the furthest limit of rotation, hold for eight to 10 seconds. Maintain a continuous stretching of the twisting neck at this point and then slowly rotate the head back to the center. Slowly rotate, good, very good. Continue the rotation to the left, again to its furthest extent, hold for eight to 10 seconds. Again, maintain the stretching of the neck. And then return the head to a forward facing position and repeat the entire sequence up to three to four more times. I don't know if you could see my correction here, but one of the things that can happen is we don't realize it, but we turn and then we, we, we tilt. I'm exaggerating. She, she was not tilting this much. But it's, it's natural for us to kind of have a position that our body is used to. Go ahead and continue rotating if you want, or you can watch me. But as you turn, remember thinking that head suspended. So my chin, everything you want to keep turning on this axis. Don't, you don't want to end up kind of accidentally thinking that your head suspended, but I'm actually doing sort of a neck roll. So it really is finding this axis here and rotating on it, right? Although this movement appears very simple, it is, its subtlety is typical of the Nakong system. That is a fancy way of saying what it looks like and what it is are two different things. When analyzed on one level, for instance, it works on stretching the entire network of tendons throughout your body. Branches reach down to the underside of the arms, through the palms, to the fingertips. Likewise with the legs, all are connected through with the back and the spine, along the spine, which is being stretched and twisted the way you might bring out a washcloth. So, again, if you guys can watch me do it now if you like, by, you know, being mindful of the alignment, rooting through those feet. I feel the outside edges of the feet, of the feet and the heel mostly is where the weight is, but my, the ball of the foot is engaged. I'm not, I'm not cranking my knees out, but I am thinking rounding out. I've got my tuck. I'm gonna round through here. He's very rounded and exaggerated. Um, I have a hard time keeping my head suspended if I'm that rounded. I end up doing this. So for me, this feels correct for me. And if you ever hear me come around and make that correction, like don't pinch off here. So you're rounded, but I'm not trying to crimp at this bendy spot. So I'm connected through the back here. I am rounded, but I'm not, I'm not pinching. Got my hips suspended. And already here, by having this alignment, I feel it all the way through here into my thumb this way. But as I rotate, now I feel that down into my pinkies, both sides. And I feel, 
feel the roots increasing in my feet, like I feel the pressure increasing as I make this rotation. Master Goring has added a little thing, and then from here you can look a little further with your eyes. I'll talk about why that could be helpful, aside from just being something else you can do. So notice I'm, I'm trying not to accidentally let my chin tip, tip out, so I'm really trying to keep on that spinal vertebral axis. Okay, in addition to Nate Kong being, you know, making correct, um, we as Westerners, we've got this forward head syndrome. Everything we do is, you know, computers driving, whatever, and so we end up, I'm exaggerating, but this is where we, we end up. So what we don't want to do is rotate on this twisted, crooked axis, which is why shoulders down, head up, head suspended, cleans up that spinal alignment, and so you can get good range of motion in the proper plane of gravity. And the reason why I say the proper plane of gravity is when your head is forward, your head average weighs about 13 pounds. So if it's off its axis, that's 13 pounds of body weight, which then gets um, magnified throughout the body. And so it pulls everything forward and you end up with all kinds of you know, muscle strain, postural issues. So this is really good for that. Now, your anatomy lesson for the day is your eye muscles connect back here. The optic muscles connect underneath the suboccipitals of the brain here. So by doing this and rotating your eyes a little bit more, you can actually affect a little bit of relaxation in those optic muscles. So if you have a tension headache or you know just kind of be feeling that pressure in your eyes, sometimes doing owl turns head with that emphasis on, on ro rotating your eyes a little bit more can help release that. It's really hard to feel that muscle work, but if you're very light touched and you're subtle, you put your hand here and you rotate your, you know, you look around, you can feel a little, just a little bit of change back there. So that was one of my eye-opening, no pun intended, <laughs> accident, I said that. In, in anatomy and physiology, like they, they connect through your head back here, and the answer is yes, they do. So um, Alvator's head is excellent for helping to undo a little bit of that forward head, everything we do out here, and can help with, you know, some, some head and neck tension. All right, so let's try Owl Turns Head a couple times together. And just on your own pace. And you hear me say your legs aren't done yet, so try not to come up here and like, I'm just rotating. Like, you know, really get the, the lower half of the body as well. Now, I don't know about you, but even just here, I feel a little bit of a pull through my shoulders because I've had them up in my earlobes for a week now. So good for me too. would say the more times you rotate like each time you rotate see if you can you probably don't have to even try like you'll be like oh I'm looking farther behind this time so some of that tension will work out um, I could say I could say you can you can go just to that point of discomfort I wouldn't try to force through it 
Um, what can happen if you do that is you'll get a neck cramp or you know weird stuff will happen and we're not trying to do neck cramps. So if that happens, you know, back it off a little bit. It happens to me. I'm like, oh, that was too much, Dirk and Butcher in front of the camera. Uh, you know, just, just come back. Okay, no cramping. So, you know, um, play, play with it. So, you know, in physical therapy or massage therapy, we say just to the point of discomfort and hang out there rather than plow through. Similar, similar thing here. So get to your range. You know, don't back off from it, but don't plow through it either. But I would usually, even just as you rotate, Two or three times, even if you can find it's you're like, oh, you know, so look at me being an owl. So, <laughs> good question. Any other questions? No? All right. So, um, since we have a few more weeks on this rotation, basically from now on is just pick, pick a pose. You know, if you have questions about anything, and that, that's how we'll do uh, the black sash training portion. And let's do our life skill. <coughs> The path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. The path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. The path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. Intermediate level students, students at home, thank you for promoting me. <laughs>